Hello, how, how's it going? Welcome back to How to D&D. Uh, yes, this is Dungeon Master Prep. That means we actually have to build something, but first I have to talk about stuff. And <clears throat> somebody had asked, uh, what about Beholder Lairs? And I was like, well, sure, we can do Beholder Lairs. Um, I'm not the expert on the field, but fortunately there is a book that was written that is very good at that. You just can't buy it. <laughs> So this is this is where my head's at. I'm going to put up a poll. You're going to let me know what you think, what you want to do, and uh, we'll go from there. Hello, Fender. Fender is a patron and also a moderator. Thank you for showing up. It's going to be a fun day. <clears throat> Fender, I did see your message on Patreon. Um, I'll get back to that um, and answer that a little bit later, okay? Um, or I'll do it on Patreon probably. If I, unless I do it in the stream, we'll see. So grab some food, some drink, get ready. We have got a lot to cover, and I think this is going to be an interesting discussion uh, because, yes, we're covering uh, creating locations, and <clears throat> I have promised Beholder Lairs is the, uh, we, we're going to, it's going to come. We, 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 we're doing it. It's, it's happening today. Yeah, don't worry. It's, it will happen. <clears throat> Okay, grab some food, some drink, make sure you're comfortable. I apologise if I seem, seem a bit croaky. I am struggling to deal with mucus yet again. It's like it's forever for me. In any case, you don't really care about that. Let's just get on with the show, shall we? <clears throat> Hi, welcome to How to D&D. Oh, God. <clears throat> Sorry. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Weller and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons because that's what I do here. <laughs> it's D&D, How to D&D. Dungeon Master Preparation. This is where we actually do some work. This is Lesson 4, Creating Locations. What does that mean? What does it look like? What are we covering today? Well, as it happens, my overview for today is the following. Um, inspiration for Creating Locations. I'm going to talk about that how to create locations, the location details and information, specific location layout, like, you know, what does that mean? Well, I always talk about a specific location. In the past, I've talked about other topics, such as castles and tombs and so forth, but today is the beholder layer. I'm going to talk about the beholder layer. And I also give you some miscellaneous recommendations, because that's hopefully going to help you along. My objectives for today, I'm going to explain everything, the process of building uh, an adventure location. I'm going to demonstrate the process as well, and I'm going to give you a chance to practice and, and help me do that. That's why you're here. Um, so uh, feel free, make sure you are available, because uh, I'm going to ask you lots and lots of questions. D&D Beyond has a combat encounter builder uh, for Dungeons & Dragons 5e. You may find use out of this uh, in terms of how useful uh, will it be in terms of mapping. No, not really. They do have a virtual tabletop in development, and when I know more about that and it's available, I will let you know. Inspiration for creating locations. Where do you get your inspiration from? Well, I would suggest to you that real-world uh, architecture and landmarks are a good start. I often use them myself. Find an image of a historic building and use that or the structure or area. Uh, books and movies offer many landscapes and places that are quite exotic that you can incorporate into your game. Video, video games have, uh, particularly the RPG play experience, they usually present very dynamic environments that you can explore, so you could use video games. Pictures, paintings, a landscape, artwork done in oil or acrylic or even watercolour, could be something that you could use as a, a location for your adventure. Pre-made, role-play, published adventures. Like anything that has been pre-published as an adventure, they often have locations that you can reuse or maps that you can reuse as well. Uh, Google search, Pinterest, ArtStation, DeviantArt, all have images of locations. These are good starting points when you're trying to get inspiration for your location when you're doing anything for your game. Um, how do you create a location? What does that look like? I'm going to suggest to you that uh, use real world architecture, like use uh, plans and layouts, uh, deck plans of real ships, 
uh, floor plans of real buildings and ruins. It's very useful, okay? There you, you can make some modifications, of course, but that's a good starting point. I want you to check out Sly Flourish's fantastic locations. His pre preparation method around this is really good. Um, you can make it old, and his concepts are pretty basic. Distilled down to is make it old, make it large, give it unique features, make it functional, and give it an interesting name, okay? That's very helpful. All that will help create a more fantastical location or something that's a bit more exotic. Focus on making the location reusable as a set piece. It's really helpful for the future in terms of your preparation because many locations tend to repeat, such as you, a village tend to be built the same way. So villages, towns, cities, castles aren't quite the same way, but there is some basic um, parameters and things that they generally have in terms of a castle, depending on its size. A stronghold, tombs are usually built the same way, pyramids, uh, a maze, now obviously a maze will be different in almost every respect, because every maze is different, uh, but the concept behind them is that there is an entry point and an exit point, and that's it, and so you can often reuse a lot of mazes from activity books uh, and incorporate them into your own, own game. Uh, a temple, usually constructed the same way, a shrine, a mine, um, caves can be pretty much anything. The you, cave locations can vary, but they, they, the, the concept behind them is pretty much the same. And then your monster layers. A lot of the monsters have layers that have a, a particular layout and formation. Your death trap dungeon, your treasure vault will pretty much look the same, and your sailing ship, ship with the deck plan and its, um, its hold is usually almost exactly the same. You'll find the Dungeon Master Guide has some useful information on page 292 to 295 if you're interested. That's for Dungeons & Dragons 5e. And sure, the location is interactive for your characters because it's the tool, um, or one of the tools, that you're going to be utilising as part of the three pillars. And remember, one of the three pillars is exploration. Your location needs to be something that needs to be explored. There needs to be things that are hidden that you need to find. Draw a picture with digital tools or a pencil and paper. Um, change what you need and, uh, you know, make it sure it's going to fit into your adventure or your campaign. Make sure to label the map with the locations. There are lots of digital tools out there that you can utilise. I'm going to say to you right now, it is not essential that you use a digital tool. Okay, it doesn't look, need to look professional. If it's for your own game table, it doesn't matter. If you're publishing, you won't be watching this. Um, in terms of pen and pencil, though, like you, anybody can do that. Okay, you, you're the only one that ever needs to see that, uh, that map. So it doesn't need to be um, a masterpiece in any way whatsoever. So don't worry about that sort of thing. <clears throat> Locations details and the information like what are the things we need to pull out for this when we're doing our um, our area well um, there are some questions you want to ask who created the location and I would suggest look at the dungeon master guide on page 100 for some ideas and um, or you could just create your own but there are some a list of ideas about who might have created the location the dungeon the location what is the purpose of the location? So figure out what that is. A mine is used for mining for ore. Um, a castle is used to defend a location. You can see the Dungeon Master Guide for a few things that would sort of break down what the purpose of a location might be on page 101 of, uh, for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. What is the history of the location? Uh, what is the, why is the location actually important? Now these questions are partly answered in the Dungeon Master Guide on page 101 as well. What inhabits your location? The general population of the location. Is it full of orcs or goblins or zombies or skeletons or some other creature? And uh, I would say I'm going to point you to the Dungeon, Ma Dungeon Master Guide on page 101 to 102 and it'll give you some ideas about how to do that as well. So figuring out the general population. That doesn't mean that every part of your um, area that you've created has just this particular monster type. That's not the case. It's just what is the general dominant population in the area. Position some hazards or obstacles in your location, such as traps and puzzles to slow them down. Natural hazards are very good. 
uh, see the Dungeon Master Guide on page 102 to 105 and page 296 to 298. That'll give you a whole bunch of different ideas. It won't give you much in the way of puzzles because Wizards of the Coast doesn't seem to publish anything around that that's really any good. Um, it does have some trap stuff and some natural hazard stuff as well. Dressings, objects, furniture, adding features to your location with aspects that can be interacted with or manipulated. We want to do this, okay? So that the exploration um, f is actually going to be focused on. Like we want them to interact and find and discover stuff and learn more about where they are exploring and why they're going for this adventure in the first place. So I'm going to refer you to a really good section in the Dungeon Master Guide on page 298 to 301. It actually has a lot of tables and charts, which you'll find really useful for filling out all of that sort of stuff I just talked about. Now, whenever I do one of these uh, videos, I always give you miscellaneous recommendations. So I'm going to give you some miscellaneous recommendations, people. You don't have to be good at drawing a location map because you're not selling it. It doesn't matter how good or bad you are. You don't have to draw your map on gridded paper. That can be helpful, but you can draw, draw it on a blank piece of paper, that's fine. It's not necessary to use or learn map drawing software, because there are, in fact, alternative methods. Okay, there's a lot of software out there that does all the drawing for you, does it randomly. Okay, or you can draw your own, or you can reuse somebody else's maps. So many different maps have been made for fantasy locations. You can steal or borrow existing maps to your heart's content. It's really not going to be that difficult to do. And so if, as soon as you feel like it's becoming too much and too difficult, I want to remind you, you're not publishing. You don't have to put that much pressure on yourself. You will be all right. I'm hoping that this video was helpful to you and that you learned something from it and it was going to help guide you towards doing your own stuff. Um, please put your comments and your questions in the comments section. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Now I know what you're thinking people, have you finished? A actually, no I haven't finished, no I haven't finished, you just think I've finished. No, what I'm actually doing is I'm giving myself a breather because now I have to talk about the Beholder Lair, okay, and um, that's another kettle of fish. And since I don't probably think that I'll be coming around to talking about Beholder Lairs for maybe another year maybe even longer, could be two years. <clears throat> I want to make sure that I've had enough water in my system and I'm not as googly as I have been before I give you what you want. Um, so <clears throat> for those of you who are unaware, there is a resource out there that's really useful that will do a lot of what you need it to do. But there's a problem with that resource. And ultimately what I've found is how the hell do you create or draw a map for a beholder layer? If you look at how they are constructed, it's really difficult. Um, there's nothing simple about it. And so that's what the topic is for today. I am going to um, actually talk about the beholder layer. I do have a little slide I will be using and I will work out my way through this. I'm, I'm going to tell you now that, frankly, I was appalled at how complicated a Beholder Lair would wind up being, and terrified at the prospect of having to draw the fucking thing. Um, so for those of you who weren't expecting me to swear, okay, I'm going to draw it. I don't know how well it's going to turn out. We're going to give it a go. So hold on to your pants, people, because here we go. This is it. The Beholder Lair Layout. The layer of a beholder is a reflection of the monster's mind. Well, we know this. And it's designed to anticipate and thwart or slow down or stop any plans that invaders have. That, and it's basically um, a keep out of my home um, uh, arrangement. This layer is designed to keep you out of the way 
and alert everybody in the entire location of your position and then cause you death or get you captured and then tortured in some horrible way. And how do we know this? Well, if we refer to Volo's Guide to Monsters, you'll find additional information on page 13. There's a lot of information. In fact, it's, uh, there's a huge chunk of that book. Uh, but of course, you can't get it on D&D Beyond. You will not be able to actually buy it eventually because they will stop printing it, and so therefore you will be kind of screwed uh, with regard to actually getting access to it. So that means that you're now... Um, not even going to be able to get the PDF, so because there is no PDF, unless of course you manage to find a ripped and um, and stolen one, uh, something that's been pirated. So how do we talk about a topic and use that information when it's probably going to get lost to time? Well, let's have a look. When you look at how it's laid out, it's not actually that simple. The chambers of a beholder lair look a little bit like this. You've got the vestibule. This is beyond, or just beyond, the lair entrance. Um, and this is like a, a natural cave formation. It's usually inhabited by Shriekers, which is a type of monster, which act as an early warning sign. So all their purpose is, is to make noise. So if the players um, destroy them after they make noise, it's too late. They've done their job. So you don't need to worry about that. Um, certainly, if they don't destroy the sheep Shriekers, the Shriekers will continue to make noise, which has got a and its own set of problems. So that is the first place or location within the lair they're likely to encounter as they enter the lair. Entering the lair itself is difficult because the chances are that the entrance is extremely steep or a vertical hole, which has a, um, a, a, a sizable drop to it, something that would potentially mean if you don't climb down with a rope, you will die. You're going to find a lot of trap chambers in a beholder lair with a variety of traps to catch all creatures or kill them. Uh, they'll be positioned in rooms. Uh, they'll probably be a combination of anything from a covered pit trap, um, a swinging spiked door trap, uh, collapsing ceilings, uh, gravity traps, uh, gas spores are quite common in a location like this, obstacle courses. We call it the gauntlet of death, but essentially this is the death trap dungeon. Uh, but yes, it's an obstacle course. Like, uh, let's let's put you uh, through the uh, the ringer and see if you come out the other side flat or uh, still intact. An oil sprayer. An oil sprayer is a bad thing because, of course, once you're covered in oil, then something is going to light you on fire, so you burn. So traps. Every type of trap you can imagine, unfortunately for you, the beholder has probably rigged up in this place. It's much worse than something like a cobalt. In fact... It's quite possible that the Beholder has a kobold or a collection of kobold minions who have set up all the traps for them. <laughs> then you will have minion chambers. This is the Beholder's minions. They will, they will live here, eat, um, sleep, and, and cook their food. And that chamber will usually be designated for whatever they need to do. It's a, it's a living space for them, designed specifically for their needs. Um, there will be probably a prison. You'll, pry, you'll find a prison. This will have souls for, uh, cells for holding uh, captives that are typically, uh, it'll just consist of like a 20-foot deep hole, something you can't climb out of because it's got a, um, a sheer flat surface that is smooth that's been tunneled out by a heat ray of probably or disintegration ray. And then you'll have uh, at the top of it uh, and at the floor level, you'll probably find Sometimes there isn't, but often there will be a metal or wooden grate, something to stop them from being able to get through. Uh, the central gallery. This is the main beholder living area. It will be filled with objects that the creature enjoys looking at, such as art, statues, uh, its, its latest spoils from a victory. Uh, you will almost always find minions guarding or stationed in the gallery because this is the main complex area this is the center this is the the heart of the location after that as you get further and deeper into this place you're going to come come across the sanctum this is the beholder's private chamber it is at the highest elevation inside the lair okay so i i guess i guess the easiest way to understand this is as our lair unfolds we're going deeper and deeper and deeper but there's going to be a point 
where the sanctum comes in and comes into play. And the sanctum is probably going to be quite a lot higher than everything else, but in a different location. Um, it'll be inside the, the layer. It'll be accessible usually from a long vertical tunnel, which means you're going to have to climb. You won't be able to descend. You'll have to climb upward. Something that the beholder doesn't have to worry about because it can fly. It's got, it can hover. It, it floats. The room will contain a nest of sand or clothing bedding. Uh, the beholder's favorite pieces of sculpture or artwork will probably be here. And then coming off the sanctum is going to be something like the trophy gallery. This is like a, um, a long chamber decorated with mementos taken from creatures the beholder has slain or captured. Then you've got your escape tunnels because beholders are paranoid as and they have to have a way out and therefore they will have included in their lair uh, a series of trapped very steep or vertical shafts uh, that allow them to escape their lair if they need to if somebody manages to get to their sanctum um, and the the actual uh, escape route will usually be blocked off at each end of that uh, that tunnel or an escape tunnel. Okay, so you're going to have like a boulder, a large boulder here, or a, a mortared up stone wall, and that looks like, well, how can the beholder get through? It doesn't have to worry about that. It's got a disintegration ray. It disintegrates the boulder or the mortared um, stone wall, and one blast, it goes flying through there, and then the players can uh, then have to try and figure out how to chase after it. Escape tunnels usually consist of a lot of bends and twists so that nobody can just look up the tunnel and use ranged spells or arrows to shoot at the uh, beholder. Um, it can then um, avoid being targeted as it flees. So you're going to find that a lot of these bends and twists are probably going to be spaced about anywhere from 50 to 100 feet apart, usually 50 feet, because otherwise the, the beholder can't get to the next bend, which is what it will need to be able to escape. And then one of the probably the most complicated aspects of the whole thing is the tunnel section within the entire layer. There are tunnels for the beholder and there are tunnels for the minions. Uh, you'll find that as a general rule, uh, all of the cavities, whether it be the tunnels themselves or the chambers themselves, are usually going to have a very high ceiling, anywhere from 40 to 50 feet high, so that the beholder can float and fly above and use its eye rays and can't be targeted by melee weapons. You would have to use something like um, a ranged weapon or a ranged spells um, so that uh, yeah, it's harder to actually um, attack the beholder. It's going to take advantage of the, its ability to fly. But some of these passageways aren't going to be designed that way. And why is that? Uh, well, ultimately because they are designed for whoever is going to be moving through them. So not every single passageway will be 10 foot by 10 foot um, or 10 foot um, wide and 40 foot high or 50 foot high. No. Uh, there's also the other problem in how the heck do you deal with the complexity of the passage system within a beholder layer when it has a thing called the eyes in the sky. These are basically secret passageways that run along the main uh, chambers and the passageways, the main passageways as well. Uh, and they're used as reconnaissance and for surprise attacks by the beholder. And so to draw them in and place them into your map is very difficult. Probably the easiest way to look at this is to say they exist, but don't draw them in because it would just get so complicated. There's the problem with a beholder layer, the complexity of the different passageways, um, the heights of them, how wide they are, what they're designed for, their shape that they, are, um, they consist of. The eyes in the sky, I think the best way to consider this is every single chamber should have a trapdoor. And it's not just a trapdoor, it's a secret trapdoor. And that secret trapdoor is always in the ceiling because the beholder is a flying creature. And so uh, unless the players are able to find the secret hidden trapdoor in the ceiling, they'll never know that there is, in fact, eyes in the sky, these, secrets, these secret passageways running through their complex. You're never going to put those um, um, secret trapdoors or um, hatches in a wall or in the floor, uh, generally. What you're going to do is you're going to stick them in the ceiling because that's harder for whoever's entering here to actually find them and access them. 
And you can see there's a lot to deal with with something like the beholder layer. Like the layout of it is really complicated. And it's designed in that way for a number of different reasons. Primarily because the beholder is incredibly paranoid and has no intentions of being killed by anybody. Okay. So I have very briefly talked about the Beholder Lair and kind of what it looks like. Let's go to some chat. Let's have a talk to some people. And, um, and then we're going to try very hard to build and draw up a map for a Beholder Lair, which, if you, I'm seriously, it's going to be difficult. Let's, uh, let's have a look at uh, chat now. now. Uh, please ask your questions now because after that I have to get busy. Uh, I have a lot of work ahead of me. And apparently I'm going to try and get it done in the space of time that I have. God help me. Uh, in, in any case, uh, let's just assume it can be done. Right, let's have a look at the, um, the Q&A. Do you want to create a beholder layer? Yes, 75%. Okay. No, 0%. Okay, undecided, 17%. Yeah, I just scared you off by saying it's going to be bloody hard. Uh, just watching, 8%. Good to know out of 12 votes. Thank you very much for voting. So I said hi to Fender, who's a patron and also a moderator. How's it going? Nacho Nacho Man, you're super excited. Nacho Nacho Man is also a patron. And Nacho Ma Nacho Man is the one who asked, Fred, can you do the Beholder Lair? <laughs> and, I, and, and I'm like, yeah, I can. But it won't be easy, like to to actually build one. It's going to be hard, um hard. I've already kind of in my head, partly worked out what it has to be, how it has to be structured, and, and I, I think right now we need to think about behold a layer as like the the Red Queen. Um, uh, what is it? The you know in Resident Evil they have this underground complex, so we need to give it different levels for it to be effective. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. To have a single level um, layer for a beholder, no, it needs to have a, a series of levels so it's harder to get to. So you're always having to go downwards. And there's no stairs in this thing whatsoever. It's always going to be vertical um, shafts or a very steep incline. Okay, um, Willie the Nerf Herder. Hello, how are you? Uh... <laughs> You, you would? You make a death tyrant the servant of an ancient red dragon necromancer wizard? Well, I mean, he could. I don't think the death tyrant would, 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 would agree. Oh, huh. uh, okay. Really? Hmm, <laughs> interesting. How did you manage to get that word past um, my... Uh, didn't work apparently yeah all right let's do this oh uh, hello chris how are you chris has a channel by the way for those of you who don't know make a honeycomb uh, layer where the beholder is consistently flying around and shooting rays while holding the players having to hope so to to my intention today is to make the layer itself simple enough to draw and navigate without getting confused but to still give you the impression of it's hard to navigate like it'd be hard to actually access, so I this is I so I, honeycombed is not what we're going to do. We're going to do layers with different entry points, um, and those entry points are going to be difficult to get through. Uh, Noroak, how's it going? Also a patron, welcome to the chat. Uh, let's just move on here. I don't understand that. Um, Shiner eighty one, hello, how are you? Jean-Paul, laughing out loud, the beholder is the arch um, villain. He uh, he does not kill the PCs. His minions will take care of that. Yeah, probably, more than likely. Um, I wouldn't say the beholder wouldn't necessarily do the, uh, the destructive stuff. I mean, frankly, get if you get past all the minions and the traps, you're doing really well to get to the beholder. It's, it's hard work. The beholder's like, like going to be freaking out and like, ah, if they get too far, it's time to bug out. I'm leaving. Um yeah, that's right. They do have trust issues. Exactly. You reckon Xanath is better than most? I think most beholders are um, a problem. They're pet goldfish. Are oh, we going there, are we? Hello, Spirit Wolf. How are you? <laughs> uh, mounted heads of previous PCs who have fallen. That is a terrifying idea. 
but a fantastic idea too, um, um, JP. So for those of you who wanted to make your um, your trophy room really disgusting, putting the heads of uh, fallen characters seems like a really good idea. My favorite creature put into <laughs> the Elliot. Okay, all right, sure. Scariest. All right, sure. <laughs> Uh, working on is it is set up layer in the uncharted island okay teleport to different locations you know, teleportation circles would be something a, a, a beholder would consider doing in fact maybe that's what we should do here but I, I don't want to get too do too freaky okay we, we I, I know you guys get really excited when we do these things don't get too crazy on me today okay <laughs> by all means present some ideas but yeah I can't include all the too too many crazy things I've got to be able to draw it um uh dungeons and chronics hello how are you <laughs> uh okay right the guitar that live in the island into believing that he's god or using the oh yeah 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 i can see that this is my phone which i am trying to fire up right now because we are uh, obviously going to have to get started uh because i'm gonna i think it's going to take me at least an hour and Let's say uh, an hour and what? An hour and a half? I think at least an hour and a half. What do you think of the idea of a death torrent being ruled by a necromancer, um, ancient red dragon, who gave uh, it the gift of um, unlife? Uh, it's, it, it's not, who cares what I think? You just do what you want. I think people get too caught up in what other people think. Who gives a shit? Just do it. If you like the idea and you think your players will like it, just, just do it. Um... Yes, aren't Beholders the manifestation of some other dreaming astral creature? Uh, Jean, so yeah, Beholders bring other Beholders into into being by having a uh, a dream. It's quite an interesting way to go. <laughs> I like how you're going to birth it. I just had a dream and there's another one. <laughs> what sort of um, Beholder things or environmental decorations would they have? Question. Okay, good point. Do you allow PCs with flying to go straight um, up or only out of, um, yeah. look, if they, Frank, hello, Frank, hello, how are you? Uh, look, if they, if play, players can fly, then they can go fly wherever they like, can't they? they wh wh why would we stop them? That doesn't mean that they solved all their problems. There's a lot of other issues. Um, beholders are aware that if you try to go into their lair, they, they might be dealing with something, somebody who can fly. Beeswax the floor. <laughs> you could make it really slippery. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. Willie, what do you got here? Sprinkle in some um, 88 lightning traps. Uh, yeah, well, whatever you think is going to work. Okay, so I'm going to post. I'm going to put in a hashtag question, and then I'm going to start up a dungeon scroll, um, and then we're going to start doing this because we we have no other choice but to get started. Otherwise, I'm going to lose out on doing this. It's not going to work. And I'm pretty sure that um, the patrons will want a player version and a dungeon master version. So I've got to get this right the first time around. So first off, thinking about this, um, hashtag, what would beholders have as decoration in Alea? I'll let you answer that question. I have already pointed you to you towards the um, the dungeon master guide where you can kind of do that, but let's let's not worry too much about that just just now. Um, instead, where was I? I was here. This is where I want to be. I am going to shift my camera just for a second, and uh, I'm going to get you to check that out. This is Volo's guide to monsters. One of the worst things they could have ever done is decided to stop printing this thing. I know a lot of people didn't like it. Now, when I was looking at how this thing is laid out, one of the things that certainly became really apparent to me is I think we need to break it up into levels, as I said. Because we can't possibly try to draw the map the way it is. The way the, the map is now it doesn't give you an idea of how deep things are where things go um i mean we could have everything coming off the central chamber absolutely but i feel like we need to have la layers of defense and the first thing that i was thinking that would be probably the smart thing to do 
is to have the vestibule, a trap chamber, and a minion chamber on the first level. So this is level one. This is the top level. Level one. And so we're going with uh, one, the vestibule, which will be, of course, near the entrance. Two, we're dealing with a trap chamber of some kind. And of course, we want a trap chamber that will uh, make sure that they don't come back for more, ever, if possible. And then we want to have a minions chamber. Now, why are we having a minions chamber? We want somebody who, if they get past the traps, the minions can deal with them. Okay? So that's the first chamber, first set of chambers that we need to deal with, I think, in my opinion. That's for level one. And then... What I want to do after that is I want to take us down to the next level. So this will be level two. And when I'm thinking level two, I'm thinking, well, I would like to have the central gallery here. But I don't want to lead straight into the central gallery. What I want to do is I want to go another minion cha chamber. You need to decide on what sort of minions you want. <coughs> Pardon me, cockatrice. Very nice. Very nice. It's a cockatrice. So a minion chamber on the next level, because we might have to have more than one lot of minions here. I feel like it would be not, um, a, a smart idea to put some of the stronger minions at the top level, um, or we can put them further down. I mean, it's, it's really up to you. Um, have a think about what sort of minions we want to include here. The next thing on the second level with the minions, this is where we need to have a prison. I want to have a place to actually hold prisoners. And then the, on the second level, we'll also include our central gallery. Okay? Central gallery is really important, so we're going to make sure we have our central gallery. And that's the central gallery. And then also on that level, I feel like we also need to have a trap chamber. Now, we might position it so that we have trap chamber, minion chamber... Um, prison um, location and coming off the minion chamber is also the central gallery. So there's there's a there's a, there's a pathway we need to follow to make it harder. Jabba's hut is a good reference for this point. Yeah, no, no, I, I'd agree. I, I think you I think you're right. Um, trap chamber. So the second level needs to have three different rooms. And I'm breaking as as you can see. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to break this down into smaller maps for each level. So level one, level two, and then the third level, which is the last level, this is where we finally, finally find ourselves um, having to actually enter into the, um, I guess you would say, this is level three, sorry. This is where the beholder will actually be. So the first room in here, I think should be a trap chamber again. I'm also thinking the third level should also have a minion chamber. I want to include at least three different types of minions. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that, that, that's that, that's that's cool. You, look, you you can build it however you like. I'm just trying to think about like if I was a beholder, and had one eye and was completely paranoid, and should be on drugs all the time because of my paranoia, um, then what would I do? And I think I'd go trap chamber, minion chamber. Then it leads into my, actually, if anything, no, no, no. And then the sanctum. Then we go sanctum. Sanctum will be on the same level. Uh, and we want four will be the trophy gallery. So there are four different rooms on the third level to make up what we really need. The fifth thing we need to add, which is not actually a room that we're going to add, is we need to definitely do something around um, an escape tunnel. I'm not going to try and draw in the eyes in the sky tunnels. It would be ludicrous to do so, okay? So let's forget about that. Um, Spirit Wolf, a, a trapped demon in a box in the center of a trapped room. Oh, my God. So five is going to be just an escape tunnel. This is obviously going to have to be connected to the sanctum. And we might even want to put one in the uh, 
the trophy um, the trophy gallery as well. So maybe we'll have two escape tunnels. Okay, so that's my plan, which means I now have to draw all this stuff up on Dungeon Scroll, which is of course where we're going next. While you guys come up with um, terrible and horrible things to include. Mirrors everywhere. Hello, uh, Warrior King. How are you? I uh, said hi to Jean. Um, if I miss you, it's because I'm trying to think and, and do stuff at the same time. Now, if you come up with a really good idea, so three different levels, okay, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to shift over to Dungeon Scroll. Dungeon Scroll has apparently updated, and I have not had time to actually use the new updated version. Dungeon Scroll. I'm a little worried about that fact. Um, I'm glad that they have updated it, but I, I'm just a little bit terrified at the fact that I'm now using a piece of software that I, I'm not as familiar with as I was before. It, it, I mean, it essentially seems to be the same, just a slightly different layout. So I need to just work out where the hell I stick my head when I transition over to this thing. Okay, so where is this thing? Um, please, on the hour, let me know uh, that I need to stop. Uh, so I take, do take a rest. Otherwise, I will just keep going. Remember, we have to do a total of um, three levels to this thing for it to work. And now my head needs to be a lot smaller today. So if you guys are like, Fred, your head is so small, I can barely see you. Okay. It's to keep my head out of the way so you can actually see what's going on. Um, I'll try to keep the hat on. That'll sort of help, I guess, a little bit. And I make sure that you can actually see where everything is. Is this going to work or can I put myself here? I'm kind of tempted to shuffle myself like about part way down. I can actually make my head even smaller. And then you then, then I shouldn't get in the way at all. Let's see if this works. Let's transition over. Okay. All right. It's not brilliant. Um, but it's not terrible. I do feel like uh, it's not it's not too bad. Oh, what do you, what do people think? Are they happy with that layout? Does this look like uh, what you were after? Oh God, a quicksand room. Geez, that's um that's a good idea. <laughs> Let's see if okay. I'll stick myself there, and I'm just going to shrink myself and make myself even smaller. To be fair, seeing me doing my thing is not nearly as important as the actual process. So you can see me and I'm tiny. This I'm an insignificant little speck in the world right now. Look at that. You could squash me like a bug and uh, there'd be no problems whatsoever. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> Let's start off with uh, level one. So level one needs to be the vestibule. Not only has the vestibule got to be part of this, we've also got to make sure we have a trap chamber and we also need to have a minion chamber. And this is going to be our stage one. So, first off, first problem. How's it going, Byron Lee? Um, Norok, I am going to apologize right now. You guys, uh, just, just bear with me while I do this. So our first problem is, the vestibule is a naturally forming cave. And I think what we'll do is we'll make that our... Um, one of the major chambers. The trap chamber can sort of be moderate size. The, the minions chamber needs to be quite large. So we're looking at using something that gives us a, um, a relatively... Uh, where the heck is it? It should be here. I can't see it. I saw it before. Oh, there it is. This should be... This allows us to probably draw something that's a bit more... Um, what's the word? Oh, I don't even know what to say. Um... That layer there, dungeon layer. Let's do the dungeon layer. Here we go. So let's just draw in a vestibule. Naturally forming cave. So we'll just start drawing like that and kind of get to a size where we kind of feel like it's right. Um, naturally forming cave might be slightly unusual in shape because we are dealing with the vestibule after all. So it's not going it's, it's to it's look like it hasn't been carved out by a beholder, frankly. Okay, now the question is, is that vestibule big enough? Are we giving ourselves enough space or do we need to go bigger? Have a think about it, people. We can go back and can we fix it if we need to. 
Uh, the, the screen is kind of blank right now. That's because I hi hi West. How's it going? Um, mo mainly it's we um it's blank because I haven't done very much. Right next is our our trap ch um trap chamber. So what we're going to do here with the trap chamber is we're going to put that right beside where the vestibule is. Um, so we will probably I think that the simplest way is to have it reasonably close so that we, any passageway we draw in is going to be quite steep okay let's go here um, do we want a long long chamber a long chamber rather than a cave like that we'll go here okay and I'll go longer we'll give it a little bit of shape to it um, and then we will link it up like that look reasonable um, how large is the party supposed to be I don't uh, who, who knows how large the party is supposed to be we don't know how large the party is supposed to be the reality is that uh, because we don't know how large the party is supposed to be that's actually unimportant as a as a in, in fact what we're really more interested in is where is this is just making sure the locations are big enough for them to be able to do stuff so if we feel like they're too small you let me know i will going to put in passageways connecting these um, and i'm also going to uh, put in a entry point for this in a second but i'll i want to do the main minion location for era for our area so this needs to be quite a lot larger we also need to decide what minions would be lurking here okay but in this case it frankly doesn't matter because you'll decide what they li what lives here so let's go with a much larger location it's probably going to be carved out so let's just carve out a biggish area let's go with an outline we want a relatively large cage um, cave area for our minions to live in because they've got to have everything here correct not only that we're not going to get too fancy do you really think that the beholder cares about with them having se separate rooms um, they they get like a it's it's open o open uh, open living for them okay All right so I've done this bit but I need to get rid of the bit in here what's this thing here it's what is that now don't want that stop doing this okay undo this undo this where's my undo button um, let's do that okay let's cut that out okay let's just I'm just going to just cut all of this out here and then that that will sort of give us our first level um, now we can we you can with dungeon scroll put in things like fireplaces and so forth so uh, there is tools for doing that so we'll just cut out this and there does it do it it's taking a little bit of time i know it's not come on end <sighs> update to the software and i am having troubles undo okay let's do the undo again and let's see if we can get to a point where I can actually. Uh, all right, so redo. And uh, this. Okay, there we go. All right, start again, Fred. Let's try that again. Technical problems. The Blink Mammoth. Uh, the Blink Mammoth. No, I haven't really heard about. Uh, the, that's. I know who did this. Um, AJ. Uh, did a video on the Blink Mammoth, did he not? I'm pretty sure he did. Okay, so we've cut out that a little bit more.
and a little bit more and we'll cut out a bit more over here there we go it's getting there sweet okay all right <clears throat> Uh, Jean, did, can you make um, a little passage, passageway in the interior there? Uh, I can make a passageway uh, pretty much anywhere I like. I'm going to add in passageways last. An underground lake with a, a lava vent um, island in its lower levels. Spirit Wolf, you're really going for it, aren't you? Vertical height also, the, the floor and the ceiling would uh, change at different places. Yes, it would, Jean. Absolutely. Let's just remove this. Okay. Now, um, I want to draw just a straight line to link this up. This is a steep passageway, and we can just go there and link this straight up to here. Okay, and then a very steep passageway can be linked straight from here to there. Nice and simple. All right. And the spaces are big enough for our uh, beholder to get through if they really wanted to go through this, this route. Although I feel like the, the beholder might be using a back door for all we know. But in any case, it doesn't matter. So this is the, the area. We need to see, if the, I'm pretty sure if I can find it, there are some elements that I can add to this. Uh, images. There's nothing in here loaded. Shapes. Have they changed? Have they changed it? I know that they used to have the ability to add in um, a pack layer. Oh, if they if they have maybe I won't be able to do very much with this um, software today. Um, layer packs are made up. Hidden sub. Okay, unpack layer. Color, shading. Um, text no wide grid. Images, okay, opaque, that's my layer there, modes, divisions, oh it's changed so much, theme, no, um, images, no, search. So we need to add in some different elements into these locations, right, so let's try see if we can put in some shriekers into the vestibule. Um, shrieker. I don't know that they'll have shriekers in here, but you never know. There's nothing. It looks to me like you might have to load all the elements yourself. Okay, shrieker. Uh, mushroom. Stagmites. Use them as cover. Yes, true. Uh, let's try mushroom. Nothing. Okay. Uploads advanced. Oh, okay. Here we go. So we need there's There we go. There's there where it, there's where it is. A few changes here. Mark gospel nature. Gospel there. The castle furniture. No X. What's this? Okay. So we've got a few options. So let's get rid of that. And there's okay. So we now open it up to a whole lot of different things we can add in here. So we can actually start putting a few things in here. So the first thing is. Let's put in uh, a bunch of bones to indicate that people have died. I don't want it there. I would like to put it over here. And we need, oh, I almost forgot to, we need to have a an entry point, don't we? So let's have an entry point to this thing as well. Um, so let's go, say, that's our collection of that. We'll go back to our dungeon layer. Um, I will return to our... Let's put in a tunnel. Um, we're going to assume that it's there's mostly a vertical drop here. So um, what's it going to look like? Almost like it, the entry point might be a well, I was thinking. So um, that's it. That'll just be our, oh, can we go a bit further? 
that's our entry point right there. Okay, so back to images. Now, if I scroll down here, I should be able to find, I'm looking for some sort of mushrooms to indicate our shriekers. Uh, you can have crystals, various other things. I don't really want any of them. Gold, piles of gold. No, 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 no. But there is those mushrooms there. And more mushrooms is better rather than less mushrooms. We've got some numbers. We can actually number these um, the, these maps, which is good. And we can also label. And we've got rubble as well. Okay. All right, so a well or a cysteine. That's actually what I was kind of thinking. It would be good if we had a well or a cysteine that we could actually put in here and stick it right about there. Uh, would be super help. There we go. Um, a well or a cysteine. I think that's probably good enough. Is it going to be big enough though? Is it too big for our location? Okay. All right, so that's too big. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our layer. We'll make our little area that we were carving out before a little bit bigger over here. Give it a little bit of a rougher shape. And it's doing that stupid thing again. This is one of the things that really pisses me off with this uh, the software is sometimes it just, oh God. The thing you try to do doesn't let you do it sometimes. Okay, let's see if I can un, un, unconnect that little soccer. All right, let's try it again. A little bit of technical issues here. Okay. And... Okay, so that should give us enough space to put in the, the well that we had selected before. I think it was the bigger one. We'll put that here. Or cysteine, we can call it there. This is our entry point. Okay, good. That's done. Right, now now we need the shriekers. This is the um, fungus or mushrooms that we had found before. These are rocks, no. Shriekers, rocks, like there we go. And we'll put some of that. Now, I think what we're going to do is we're going to put quite a few in this area uh, rather than just a, a couple. Um, we want to force them to be able to move through this area without, uh, uh, with, with, uh, with no immunity. We want them to be, to suffer. Um, I want them to find themselves in the position where they actually have to make their way through. Um, and there's not any easy way to actually navigate this place. So we're going to put quite a few in this area. Remember, this is our alarm system. And another one. I'm going to stick it right smack in the middle. Or close to that. So they're going to get too close. Should activate it. And then suddenly all shit, um, shit hits the fan. Okay, so what do we got here? Long drop. Thank you, Nacho. I appreciate long drop works for mine. Um, entry point is a latrine. <laughs> Down a toilet. <laughs> and here you are at the bottom. Uh, mushroom, mushroom in mushroom land. Okay, so let's do one more. And I think that's probably more than enough to, um, to, to indicate that we are in the Shrieker location. Okay, there's our Shrieker location. Next, traps. Now, I'm not sure that I want to mark on here traps as such. So in the trap location, which is this location here, the next one that leads in from the first room we made, what are we doing here? Frankly, um, what do we want to put in this location? So I'm going to put in hashtag now, and you're going to tell me. Hashtag. What should... No, I'm not saying what sort of trap should be there, but what should be in the trap room? What should be in the trap room? It would be really nasty to put barrels, crates, and, and, and um, chests in the trap room. That would be a horrible thing to do. Trap room. Oh, come on, Fred. Get it right. There we go. So this is the hallway section. This is our trap. This is the area we're using as our trap room. Okay. A quick sand trap. Okay. Yeah, but 
we can't put quicksand in there because the players would see the quicksand. So we can say there's quicksand in there, but on the map itself, uh, remember, I want you to be able to reuse this map, okay? So what do we put here to entice them to come through? They don't care about wood. Um, I mean, we could put a fountain in here, but we got um, they just came from there. What would entice you to come through? Um, the spear trap is drawn in. That's for a dungeon master. A bath. You want to put a bath in there. So we can add traps, but that'll be on the dungeon master version, people. A doormat telling you, clean your feet. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, well, we're not going to put chairs. That would be stupid. We could put a statue. Statues always draw attention, do they not? People always get interested by a statue. A statue is actually not a bad idea. And let's put the statue over here at the far end. So they have to walk all the way across the hallway. Yeah, treasure. Treasure is a probably a good idea. So putting in a something that not necessarily looks like art. Somebody just left their treasure chest in a weird place. But some crates or barrels would be nice, would it not? I, th I think what that would do is um, it would say, ah, it, this place is worth exploring and checking out. And so why not go have a look? Um, now, we've got some barrels here. Let's grab some barrels. A whole bunch. And we'll put the barrels. Where shall I put the barrels? I'll, I actually want to put them in this little niche here, right here. Does that seem a bit cruel on my part? A statue, yeah, an illusion of a prisoner. Uh, do a quicksand trap. Treasure. So we need a treasure chest. If we're going to put a treasure chest in here to entice them to walk across the room, which is, of course, the last thing they should do. Um, we're not going to put a fire pit in here because that kind of makes it look a little bit odd. We could put some crystals in here. We could put some, some daggers, some weapons. I don't know that that's necessarily, that's doors. Don't want to do that. Did I see a treasure chest in here? Or do I need to go to a different uh, set of options here? I think I might have to go to a different set of options. A sarcophagus, it's too, if we, it's too obvious that there's something going on if we do that. If we put that there, and this is the wrong place to put chairs. And, ah, here we go, treasure chest. So let's put a single treasure chest. And we'll just put it on the other side of the room, right here. How's that sound? Or partway through the room? Like so. Uh, break time. Thank you, um, Illusion Walls, Illustration of a Prisoner. Illusion, yeah, yeah. A Mimic Table. I don't think a table here is going to make sense. Or maybe something disguised as a prisoner. If I could find a cage, I would put a cage in here. But um, I think we've done enough. We've got a treasure chest. We've got some barrels. We've got a statue. And then we'll put whatever traps in here that we want. And in this location here... And you're right, I need to go and take a break. But before I do that, I want to actually complete this section. We need a fire pit. We need a fire pit for our minions. We need somewhere for them to sleep. Um, they're probably not going to necessarily have tables and chairs or curtains or anything like that, but we need to put in some other bits and pieces. Um, I'm thinking whoever gets here, you, if you got this minion cave, you got the worst, um, worst deal, basically. Didn't you not? And I don't see anything that looks like a fire pit or anything like that. Am I am I not paying attention? Am I skipping it? Did I did I move right past it? Okay, let's let's have a look at the other options. I had um, axe blade, and then after axe blade was no castle furniture. Won't be that one. What's this one here? No, that looks that looks totally wrong. Um, Mark Govis, that looks. I think we want wilderness stuff, don't we? Maybe the campsite for um, for nature. That probably is going to work better. Let's see if we can find a campsite. A pit. That's a hole. This is what we want, is we want a hole. We want a hole that leads us down to the next level. That is our hole. 50 foot or longer to lead to level 2. And we'll put it way the heck over here. Yep. That's our hole. That's the that's the entry point to the next level. Not a staircase, but a hole. 
and um, I don't want tents. TP, tents TP. Uh, first take. Uh, illusion on the open door, wall. Maybe some sort of disguise, a prisoner. Um, I'm just trying to find a fire pit, and, and for the life of me, all I want is a fire pit and some bed rolls. That would be like the best. But apparently, I can't find bed rolls or a fire pit. If we can't find them, we don't put them in. Um, okay, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. Okay, so what is, what is that in the? Um, da, da, da. No, no, no. I had a look at that. That didn't show me anything. We'll go here and see if I can find a fire pit. Fire pit, fire pit, fire pit. Bedding. It's a bed. That's a bed roll. I think that's probably more useful to us. So these we can put in here. Put a few of them in. It's just bedding. Nothing too fancy. They don't get the, uh, the high life here. Who does? You got the worst, worst, uh, the worst deal. Um, and how many do you think we should have here? Where should they be spaced? Where should they be positioned? I think, I think that'll do. You get the idea. Okay, no, um, no, right, I'll see you later. Have a good day. Okay, so um, we need, I think what we need to do is find ourselves something that would be suitable. What I would like is some crate. Ah, here we go, fire pit. It took me ages, but I found it. There's a fire, let's put two fire pits in here. We'll put a fire pit over here. It's a fire pit there, and then there's this bigger one here. We'll put another fire pit over here. Okay, so um, I would like to have some crates or some barrels or something like that, or just something to sort of make the area a little bit more interesting. Crystals would be cool. Debris is not really that interesting, but crystals, let's see if we can get the crystals to sort of... We're going to do a couple. Um, it's a different crystal shape. Where did it go? There we go. And I don't know. Um, that's bread, wood doors, gold piles. Don't need that. Don't want mushrooms. Uh, we've had mushrooms before. Sacks, piles of rocks, sarcophagi, um, stone blocks. Um... A wool grate, no. Oh, how about a wool lever? Can I put a wool lever on here? I don't think that's going to work very well. Um, wool of swords. Um, wooden crates. Okay, so that's what I was after. Wooden crates. Let's put some crates in here. I'll do that a couple times. And I don't know, say... How are we looking? A round altar in the center. I don't know if there's an altar here. If I can see a round altar, I'd grab it. Because um, I wouldn't be a against the idea at all. But I just don't see anything that's kind of like that. Um, that's just a soft goth guy, so we don't really want it. Some sacks. Bag of sacks. Um, a pile of sacks. That's actually not a bad idea. Let's put some sacks in there. You'd have it around the food area, wouldn't you? And maybe some barrels as well. Because um, barrels are fine. Barrels are good. There we go. A couple of different sized shaped barrels. Uh, okay. There's something that's missing from the center. I don't I don't know. I can't find anything that would be suitable there. Um yeah, I'll have a think about it. I'm going to go and take a break while you guys have a think about what should go in the center of this little location. It is definitely past the top of the hour. 
and it's going to be a struggle to get through all of this i can see it now uh let's go with the break scene i'm back in five Right, coming back into it. No, we hadn't, Nacho. That, I'm going to leave that open for you guys to decide. Um, I'm, I still want to try to find a, um, a an, an altar. I'm just trying to figure out where the altar is. So, uh, transitioning back. Transitioning back. Okay. All right, so uh, I think I am ready to go again. Yeah, I couldn't find anything that was sort of indicated like a slave pen. So I'm, I'm wondering if, if I go to the castle furniture, will I find an altar there? The beds, it's a different style of um, stuff, but maybe we'll find something that looks more like an altar. Oh, I can do a search too, can't I? Alter. No result under furniture. Shrine. Doesn't like me. Do that again. Oh, you silly thing. Shrine. Well, didn't didn't search there and find anything frankly the search bar didn't do diddly squat no 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 okay so this is not going to work here let's go back out of there and go to um shrine shrine where are you shrine you little sucker Nothing that looks like a shrine there, as far as I can tell. And outdoor nature, I don't think we're going to find a shrine in there. Um, we could put a tent. I don't know why we would put a tent though. Some sort of tent, yeah. Some sort of entertainment would be would be nice, or something to occupy them. I just don't know what it would be. We just don't have that much to um, work with here with this um, option. This is pretty basic. This stuff. Um, what about this one? Here we go. This looks like a, this is, this, oh, these are armor statues. Wagon. Brick. More statues. Trees. Okay, not really what I was after, though. I don't see anything that would sort of work. 
as a um, as as something we can use as a centerpiece. Unfortunately, debris not gonna work. Door locks not gonna work. Pile of wood would make no sense whatsoever. Um, sarcophagi. Well, I kind of it's a stone sarcophagi. Maybe we can get away with that. Maybe that's the solution. Um, you definitely need to be able to add uh, additional elements to this um, piece of software. It, this is free, by the way. It doesn't cost you anything. This is why I'm struggling to find anything to put in the center. Um, let's, what would that look like if I put it in the center? No, I'm going to leave it out. No, we'll just undo that. I'm not going to bother. If, we can't, if I can't find it, I won't put it in. Undo. Okay. Now that I've done that, we need to actually do a layer that is, um, where the heck is it? Not adding a map. Um, that's the dungeon layer. That's the background. Add a layer. Folder, image, advanced. Shapes, I want text. I want text. Dungeon layer, shape, da 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 da. We want to put in some numbers too. Image, grid. Hatching, not what I want. Oh, hang, hang on. I think they've moved the um, the text to a different location. What's this? That's background. No. Nope. It's not up there. God, they've moved everything around. It's really hard to find everything now. Tools are up. Hmm. Layers. Add a new layer. Add a new layer. Let's add a new layer, I guess. New layer and um, um, blend mode. Add screen. No, that's not it. Is that text? Oh, there it is. The text tool. I've shifted it. It took me ages to find it. Sorry about that, people. Ages to find the text tool. They've moved everything around so much. But anyway, um, winter wool, something they can keep them busy. Yeah, there just isn't any anything to use. Past the post, some sort of entertainment. Yeah, I'd like to do that. But it's not going to work. So text. Now, how does my text work nowadays? Because they've changed how they do this. Um, font color, font type. Oh, if I remember right, please don't tell me they have um, changed all the font types too much. They have changed them significantly from what they were. They're all over the place now. Great, awesome. Okay, so behold a layer. Let's see if I can get this to actually do a bit of text. The print is not going to be high and big enough though. Look at that, that's way too small. Beholder layer. Alright, so I need to have that significantly larger than it currently is. Uh, Okay, so so if we are trying to get that to be bigger, can I grab it? Will it let me? No, but that doesn't do anything. Font size. Can I get the font size any bigger than that? Is that it? Is that all I get? Well, well, at least we've found it, but it's not going to be anywhere near as big. So undo to completely, undo again. Where's the erase button? It used to be something else. I know, <laughs> for the life of me, I can't find it. Text. Delete. There we go. Thank God for that. Okay, so now, try again. We'll turn up the size. 
we'll change it to something else because that I hated that. That was really bad. Um, is that better? Let's see if this works. Beholder layer. Let's well, better. Not brilliant. Come on, you silly thing. Come on. Okay. Come on. Moving, moving this stuff is actually a lot more hard, more difficult. It's actually really difficult to shift everything around nowadays. I feel like the older one was a much better, better version. Portal to the Abyss, yeah, could be fun. <laughs> no. I just, all I want to do is move the thing, dude. All I want to do is move this text somewhere else. Oh. And for the life of me, it just won't do that. Um, Bob the Builder. <laughs> Bob, the, Bob the Beholder, a.k.a. Bob's Place. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, it could be. Why not? Right, so this is painful is there a better text than that can we not do better than that is that all all we have is that the only text that i have as an op option this one didn't like that one either that i hate that that's no, I think we were better with what it was before. And that's awful. Oh, that's shit as well. Oh, man. No. Oh, my God. Hmm. Partly passable. Okay. So that's it. That's what we're using, apparently. Okay. You should have a tool, I have to say. You are a should have a tool. You were so much easier to use before. Now, going back to um, image layers. Um, no, 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 no. Demon or devil, uh, it, w it would be lovely. It, it would absolutely be lovely. I just don't think, <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> okay. Rock piles, rock pile, rock piles, rock sacks. Da 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 da. Statues. Da 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 da. No, no, we're 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 done with this. Okay, so this is where my head's at with this. I'm going to go to, now there should be an export option here somewhere. Oh, it's on the side. There it is. That's plugs. Export. PNG. We'll make it a PNG. High resolution on. Oh, okay. Oh, so you've got to pay for the high resolution. Okay, I got it. File name. Uh, beholder. Layer. Level one player. What the heck is going on there? Okay, let's do that again. Behold a layer. Level one player. Okay. Pixels. Cells. It's going to be a. It's still a big image. It's not. It's not small. Um, let's see if this, this actually works. Since it seems like it's already, it's already cut it. 
which is good. I'm, I'm quite happy with that, the fact that it's actually done that automatically. I wonder if the image actually shows up where I want it to show up. It did. Well done. Well done. Okay, good. Good news. Good program. Good program. Okay. <laughs> so this, we'll get rid of that. Go back to here. Okay. Okay, right, cool. All right, so we need to actually number the sodding thing too, don't I? So, uh, is it images? I've just lost all of the sidebar there that I had before. Great. Layer. Background. No, views, themes, light, dark, hide, chat box, show, hide, IT, don't know that. That's not what I was after. Images. Oh, okay, so you can actually take them out if I want to. Interesting. Lovely. Okay, that's fine. Okay, there we go. Back to here. So, we have to actually label a few things. Um, so, putting numbers on here would make sense as well in text. So, a one. Aerial one. Um, do I make it bigger? Area one and area two. It's area two, and this is going to have to go somewhere like there, I guess. And we'll expand that a little bit. Okay, area two, area three, area three can just be marked down here or over here, it really doesn't matter, area three, here we go, all right, back to uh, my layer with my text if I can find it, right, text, there it is. It's as big as I can make it. It's in that format, which is fine. And let's see if we can actually type in what I want this time around. So, vestible. Oops. All capitals, so vestible. Vestible. This is the vestible. And then um, I guess we'll just type in here. Come on. Oh, do I need to do text again, do I? Thank you for telling me. That's always good. All right, vestibule. And then next one is the trap chamber. Looks like a Dyson Logos map. Yeah, it does a little bit uh, Nacho Nacho Man. Um, I mean, if somebody spots uh, some software they would prefer me to use in the future that isn't going to cost um, people money or me, I'm happy to do that. Won't let me do, do the, the move it over thing. Ah. Oh. You used to be able to shift all this stuff so much easier than it is now. Um, or I just delete it and start again. I guess that's 
that's the solution. Of course, you've got to hit the button again. There we go. All right. Trap chamber. And come on, you. That's better. Okay, next. This is minion chamber. Minion chamber. You'll decide what chamber it is. Is it pixies? Pe a tribe of pixies. Oh my gosh. Would that not be fun? <laughs> Tribe of Pixies. Okay. I think I've got it labelled. These numbers are actually a little bit easier to move than uh, than I would have uh, thought. So I can actually put these things in reasonable places. Okay. There we go. Uh, so that is labelled. So... How's this look? So we're going to go over to is it export? Where's my glasses again? I'm going to need that. Um, export PNG. That's that. That beholder layer. And I had it level one, but it said player, and it's not going to be player now. It's going to be something else. It's going to be DM. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Okay, and then if I export it, it should make it into a file, it's a reasonable size. Okay, alright, so that's the first level, and how much time have I got left? Bugger all time, bugger all time. Then no, it's not good. <laughs> oh dear. Alright, let's just check to make sure it's gone to where it needs to be. They did it, very good, I'm happy about that. So I need to do a new um, level, like this is level 1. Oh, this is the other thing I hadn't thought about is I actually have to mark on here at level one, don't I? That is what I have forgotten to do. So um, this here will delete. And I will go back to where I was. And I'll add in another text. Once I can get myself out of this thing again. That's right, that's that one. Um, text. And we'll put in level one. Do I want it there or do I want it over here? I wish I could put in a compass rose. If I could put in a compass rose, I'd be a lot happier. Level one or level one? Level one. There we go. Um, your portal to the abyss makes sense, yeah. This might be a two-parter. Oh, it could be a two-parter. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so this is... I still need to export this thing. If I got everything, I think I do. Okay. DM export. Okay, all right. So I think I've, I've got that sorted. So we'll close this. We'll check over here. It's done at this time. The player one doesn't have a level on it, so we don't give them away too much that's fine i'm all happy with that let's go out of here um all right so we need to start a new one don't we open um add a map where is it is this create new create no, no, I don't want to do that. That's not what I'm after. I am. I want to start completely fresh again. And I don't see a option to maps. Add a map. Okay. Man, they've changed it so much. It's hard to navigate. It really is. It's much harder than it was before. Okay, so what am I going to do here? Unsaved, unsaved changes. So I'll save the project so I can go back if need be. So we'll save the, the changes as a file. We'll put here beholder layer um, level one. 
one. Okay. You hold the layer. Level one. And we'll save it, that file. Okay, so file saved. Now get me out of this thing. Can I end it? Open. Let's do open. Can I do open? No. So they don't have all the options built in yet. Great. Okay, so let's, I guess I just close this and start again. Oh, that's the only thing I can think of. Dungeon scroll. Free software. Causing me a lot of trouble. And okay, so this is uh, level two. And I need to go back and make sure we're in the right place. So we are. It's just refreshing. Okay, cool. So let us cut out a new section. So I've got to create four chambers, um, a trap chamber, a minion chamber, a prisoner, a prison area, and the central gallery. I think the central gallery is the first thing I need to draw. Okay, so let's go with, uh, we've got level, yep, cool, that's fine. Let's go with, uh, let's draw out our main area first, which is going to be quite large. Okay, and then we'll just cut out all of that. This is our central area. I mean, I should have, I shouldn't be surprised um, because maps always are more difficult to build. But this, the reason I selected this program, program is it's supposed to be able to build a, a map in about fifteen minutes, and I think okay, fifteen minutes, three levels. But it's just, it's not working out. If I was able to navigate it a bit better, that'd probably be half, that's half the, the fight. But yeah, the update has thrown me completely. Okay. So this will be the central area. Um, what we lay out here is not quite so important. Now, first off, where are we putting everything? I think we'll put the, um, a lot of the chambers coming off each other. So first off, let's deal with a trap chamber. What we want to do is we want them to come down into a trap chamber, don't we? That would be the smartest thing. A pregnant hooked horror having babies. <laughs> okay, so let's do a... Um, Oh, I wonder, would that be fun? Let's do that. Maybe that is a good idea. Let's uh, let's create a, a shape. Um, the problem is, it's a beholder's um, layer. They would cut it. They would cut it out with their laser beam, with their um their disintegration ray. So that actually that's kind of off theme, isn't it? So let's not do that. So instead, what we'll do is we'll go um, cut in. And we want a trap chamber. And I don't want to make it too too wacky. Oh, it's doing that bloody thing again that I hate. Okay. So there's our trap chamber. Do we need it? Let me know if you think the trap chamber is too small, but I feel like that's big enough. So then we need um, a, a minion chamber for the minions to live. And then we need a prison um, location that would be attached to this in some way. So um, I'm thinking maybe we use this space here or actually maybe we use this space here. Okay, so let's, let's go um, chamber for our minions. Needs to be of a reasonable size. Okay, that's good, that's good. And 
and cut out through here, there. Okay, so there's there's a chamber for our. Let's just. There's a chamber for our um, our minions. Actually, maybe this should be the prison chamber, and I make the trap chamber over here. I think that's what I will do. So I'll make a different shape here. So what we're going to do here, we will probably make it a. Let's do that. Okay. Okay, so that's that's probably good enough. All right, so I'm 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 reasonably happy with that as um as our lineup for what we're doing. So this is beholder layer. We'll put in some text in a second, but we'll we'll let's deal with the passageways, passageways leading from various locations. Um, if that's the trap, that's the prison, and that there is the minions chamber. Uh, how do we connect these? We connect this. This should be probably connected to this one. Um, we could have multiple passageways leading from the prison to here if we wanted to into the central. I don't think that's such a, a smart idea, so we won't do that. We'll just go like this. Um, do I like that? Yeah, that's fine. Mm, does it? Oh, we can undo it. We can undo it. We'll undo that. Okay, let's try again. Um, there we go. That'll link that one. And then this one here is leading into... Oh, do I really want the trap to lead into there? Mm, yeah into the central we could do that I, I, I was kind of wondering if maybe the trap um, chamber should lead into the minions chamber but actually no let's go central this time shall we um, and that oh, maybe one more a little bit more out, cut it out a little bit more. Troglodyte family patrols, yeah, teleportation square. If I can find a teleportation square, I'll put in a teleportation square. Uh, probably not on this level though. I would imagine this would be a, bit, a bad place to stick it. Okay, so that's not working. Let's try it again. Okay, that's better. Okay, so this is trap location. Um, what sort of things would we put in a trap location? I think that's the, the, the question is how, how do we set up this trap location? This is our central area. What is it going to look like? What do we put into a location like that? Um, and we would probably want to put the central chamber is going to have a whole lot of things in here that are uh, things that it would like or be interested in. So let's go images. Um, okay, so that's images. So this do the the images. No sla uh, layer selected. I thought I had selected a layer. That's a layer. Is that not a layer? Is that a layer there? Okay, fine. Let's go with um, that's been working for us all right. Uh, illusion treasure any treasure piles? What kind of traps? Well, I'm not so worried about putting in the traps right now. I just think, what do we want to put in this trap room? In terms of decor decoration, what do you think? In terms of the central room, I feel like it's going to be a variety of different things um, that would be interesting to the uh, the. The beholder so I, I mean I'm already thinking roughly about what we look what that looks like but you let me know what you think would be kind of a, a nice idea um, 
I'm going to put in a different, let's put in some here. Different bed rolls, we'll just make them there and there. I don't know how many would be in this location myself. It doesn't really matter. Um, okay, that's probably enough. We will put in a single campfire over in the corner. Um, that's a cabinet that doesn't really fit. Let's put some bones in here. Bones in the corner. And a few other bones. We have, uh, I guess these fellas don't put it, get rid of their, their junk and rubbish very often. Okay. Um, singing skulls of different sizes and shapes. Ah, okay, I see. So let's, well, okay, that's fine. Let's let's put some skulls into the trap room. Let's let's do that. Let's since we we put something else there before, we can do this. We can have some various size skulls. These are quite large skulls. Um, and we'll put in a few. To represent that. A few smaller ones. Okay. I wanted to get too carried away with that trap room. So that's that's good enough. That let's put in a, can we put in a broken sword? It's way too big. But big skulls, there's an awful lot going on there. Okay, so um, I'm also going to go back to our tunnel section and I'm going to grab this. And this here is going to go down a little bit like that. Um, down and out. Okay. Right, so um, let's put in a another drop point. Um, now I found them before. This is a much larger one. Let's just put that there. That's fine. Um, Cyclops skulls. Yeah, I do feel like it is Cyclops, Cyclops skulls, and there's a broken blade there, so that'll that'll confuse people. Um, next. I could make the bed rolls a lot bigger. Let's do that. I hadn't thought about that. Let's make the bed rolls bigger. So those bed rolls are actually quite a lot bigger. They suggest that there's something like a fairly large individual potentially in this area. Does that not make sense to you? I think it does. Um, the campfire could be bigger too. So we're going to go with it being about roughly three squares, three squares maybe. About three squares in size. How's that, people? I think that's going to be a little bit more interesting. So there's a larger creature in this location. Could be ogres, could be something else. Uh, that's one, two, three. One, two, three, that's fine. And then we'll make this a little bit bigger as well. Uh, one, two, about roughly three. And actually maybe I'll get rid of that one and I'll just put four in here. Uh, they are roughly about three, about three. 
size is roughly three. That is roughly uh, roughly three. Okay, all right. That didn't work too badly. Giants secret door. Um, now somebody said secret door. What do you mean, Spirit Wolf? <clears throat> Uh, we need to put. I, I want to put. I want to put something in here that indicates um, some sort of traps. So what we had before is we had some holes, didn't we, with grates on it. Here, sewer grate is actually perfect for. This is our prison area, right? So let's put them there. One, um, two. We'll get a longer one, and we can turn it. Flip it that way. I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger. And it'll fit it into here. And I think we can make it larger again. That's fine. We'll grab a couple more of these. Um, one in the corner there. And... There's our prison location. Okay, so prison location's done. Uh, minion area's done. A secret room. Ettons, Cloud Giants. Uh, a secret room would be would be cool. Um, but as I said, I think secret hatches should be in the ceiling to go to the eye in the sky area. A, a secret chamber. I don't want to put a secret chamber here. Uh, I think primarily because I think it's too soon for this this one so what i'm going to do is but um spirit wolf i do agree that at some point there needs to be something like that so let's have a look this here i'm happy with that there i'm happy with this here is all right the central area needs something so the central area is what um the beholder would like to have to show off it's like it's main living area it won't have furniture because beholders don't need furniture um, it, I mean, I suppose it could have a big, huge couch if you really wanted to, but I don't think we have a big, huge couch um, or a big, huge pillow. What would we put here, though? That's the question. Is um, statues are always high on high priority, so a statue would be suitable. Um, so a suit of armor might be actually quite suitable for a location like this. And I think we do have access to uh, something like that. Let's see. We put some. Uh, put a statue here. I'm going to put some statues either side. Shall I put a statue either side? No. We'll just put that there. Um, wall axes. No. Broken wall. A lever. I feel like a lever is asking for trouble. I don't think a lever will fit in, in a place like this. No. It's, it's, it's going to be too difficult. Okay, let's go here, undo that, get rid of that, and remove it. Okay, that's fine. So, now, there was other things that I could utilize, if I remember right. Going back to indoor uh, castle furniture. Castle furniture might not work either. <laughs> I forgot about that. That's right, it's a different style completely. It's castle furniture, this one here. This had statues. There's a lot of different statues here, so we can actually fill the place with a lot of different statues. And there's a rug. We can actually put a rug into this location. Um, a rug. I don't know what to do with the rug. I'm going to get rid of the rug. A steam vent. Okay. Yeah, we could do a steam vent there. Something that goes further down. I see what you need to go. No altar. No, I couldn't find any altars. Animated armor. I think animated armor and statues is a really good idea. Like statues galore is a good idea. Um, we can put a steam vent in there. Let's, let me grab this. This is animated armor. Okay. Let's put the animated armor here. Let's put another set in. Um, 
actually turn it, can't we? And we can grab it and drag it over a little bit more. And we can just position that a little bit better. Uh, we'll grab another one. Place it about there and then turn it. There. Now I'm keeping the file so um, so they can get used. That's if people want to. I don't know that they're necessarily going to be your sort of thing. I feel like when you make your own um, layer, it's kind of your own sort of flair and style. So you kind of got to do your own thing. Let's see. Let's put in some really big statues. That's not going to work. That's okay. That's better. Not terrible not great okay so that's still going to be too too big so let's go with one of these here's a magic user grab it and we'll put them over about here and that's a different statue which we'll put over here and this is a different statue again and we'll put that over here oh, let's delete it do it again different statue over here Oh, it keeps dragging and okay to it again Fred one more time grab oh. seriously okay I feel like I'm fighting this thing Okay, it's beginning to piss me off now, just a little bit, and I'm running out of time anyway. A bird bath. Uh, I can go back, and I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I can put that um, that steam grate that you were talking about in. Um, beds. No, 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 no. There's armors here. Okay, so there's another another version of this that we can put in here if we wanted to. Uh, okay, so where is our steam grate? That was back under this one. Now, do you know you know what I should have done is I should have just built all of the rooms without doing anything fancy. That that's that's what I really should have done is I should have just built all the rooms without doing anything super fancy, and it would have been a, probably the better idea. It would have probably worked better. I would have got it done in time. Would have got the whole lot done. I've just carved out the, the areas and locations. Um, filling the area with steam. Light spell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Okay, so. So I don't forget what I'm doing here. This has got to be labeled something. Um, text. Crank it up. It's that one. That's fine. Snap on. That's that's good. So this is behold a layer. Um, about here, I guess. No. Behold a layer and expand. You little sucker. Sick suck. Sick 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 suck suck suck. There go. There we go. Um, I need to mark it as level one. I also need to make sure I put in a hole to level um to the next level. Now where is my hole? There was a hole here, an actual hole, not a grate, but an actual hole. Um, 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 I thought it was down the down the far end. For the life of me, I can't see it. I know I had a hole before. Am I only allowed to have one hole? <laughs> Do I have to put a staircase in? I want to put a staircase in. But there isn't there isn't that uh, the the hole that I used before just doesn't seem to be showing up. Either that or I'm blind. Okay. All right. So that's uh, not super helpful. <laughs> anyway, text. And this is 
uh, level two. Two. Okay, and um, we're not finished, so I'm going to have to just save this as a project. In the section here. No, that's not what I want you to do. Beholder. Wrong one. Beholder layer. Um, level two. Two. Save. Is it going in the right place? Hopefully it is. Okay. Bob's level two. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Um, okay, so for the life of me, I cannot understand why I can't find the, the big huge hole that I used before. Um, it's, it's like it, le it lets you have one hole, but you can only have one hole. And after that, you've got to find, uh, I probably need to, it's probably somewhere silly, like an under nature or there, yeah, there's a flu in a hole right there, isn't there? So I'll put a hole here and this will lead down to the next level. Or do I want to put the hole over here? It's tempting to put it over here. Where should the hole go? That's the question, isn't it? Like, where should I stick the hole that leads down to the next level? Should it be in this location? Or it can be somewhere else. I mean, I think we can fix it anyway. It can be fixed later. All right. Anyways, let's just get rid of that. And um, Dungeon Scroll has done its business. I have got my files. Hopefully I can go back and finish all that sort of stuff some other time. And that is, that's good enough. That's good enough. I've done as much as I can. If I had just cut all the different levels out and said behold a layer, level one, level two, level three, we'd probably, and, and label them, I probably would have got it all done in, in no time whatsoever, but I just didn't. Um, so sorry about the fact that I did not get very far. Um, you'll let me know if that was probably the better way to go about it in the future is to actually just cut out the rooms and then let you guys fill in what's going to be in each room. And I just label what room is what. I think that may be the, the answer in the future. But anyway, um, I will close this up. I should I should know better than to try to use free piece of software and try to get something done in a, such a short space of time. It, it was a little bit stressful because I, I'd had used, I have used um, Dungeon Scroll before and I knew where everything was then, but now it's all moved and so it was, it was actually difficult. Um, You'll let me know if people want me to finish this in the future. I don't know necessarily that um, uh, it's going to happen, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. Who knows? It may. It may not. <laughs> in any case, um, I am done. I run out of time. It's time for me to go to work. So I just want to say um, thank you to everybody who is uh, supporting me on Patreon. I do appreciate you supporting me on Patreon. Patreon, It really does make a big difference. You get everything that I make eventually on Patreon. For some of you who are waiting for a lot of stuff, I understand. Um, it, it will happen. It's just, uh, it's very busy <laughs> right now. I am very busy. Uh, thank you for everybody who's been part of the live stream and been commenting and trying to help me along and um, giving me feedback and taking part. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching the live stream and taking part. And watching the replays is great and all the edited videos. And definitely for putting up with all of the shorts that I've been making, which there is a lot. Uh, and then so wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon or the night or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Yeah, hindsight is a beautiful thing. Yeah, next time I ever do a map, people make sure that I don't try to get too fancy and I just cut out.